Hey everyone, and welcome to episode four of our writing correction series. This week's writing has been sent to us by Yasmin from Turkey. So let's check it out, guys. All right, let's review the question first. So the question says, your office building does not have a cafeteria. Write a letter to your manager, and in your letter, you gotta do three things. One, describe the problem. Two, suggest where the cafeteria could be built. And three, say how it would benefit the employees. So here we have uh, the letter that's been sent to us by Yasmin. Now, um, in terms of the word count, I think this falls a little bit short. So that is definitely something that we need to take into consideration. Uh, but the paragraph structure looks good. I see that, you know, we have separate paragraphs with each paragraph um, focused on a particular aim. Okay, now let's uh, take um, a closer look. All right, so uh, the letter begins with Dear Manager. Now, who are we writing to? We are writing to our manager. So do we need a name? Well, if you're working at a company, then you probably know the name of your manager. It's not wrong to say dear manager, but if you were to say something like dear Mr. Smith, it would probably make more sense because you're talking to your manager. If you feel more comfortable using your manager's first name, you could just say dear John. But if you're taking an exam, then my advice is just to show the examiner that you know the difference between a formal letter and an informal one. Uh, my advice is don't use first names and just use a last name. It's safer that way. I am writing this letter to draw your attention to the cafeteria problem that we have. Okay, now this is a very good opening. However, I think it's better to use, not to say the cafeteria problem because that implies that the other person knows uh, what problem we're talking about. So you want to start with uh, the problem. So maybe you could say, draw your attention to uh, the problem or a problem if you're mentioning it for the first time. So um, the problem and then use a post modifier like the problem we are experiencing in the cafeteria. All right. So let's read that one more time. I'm writing this letter to draw your attention to the problem we are experiencing in the cafeteria. Great. Now, on to the background paragraph. Um, look at the question one more time. The first aim is to describe the problem. So let's see how that's been done here. As you know, we do not have any cafeteria in our office building, and it is a huge problem for all of us. Okay, that's a, that's a good starting point. Um, now, any cafeteria, uh, you would have to say any cafeterias, right? So uh, you don't expect to have more than one cafeteria, do you? So we can just say, as you know, we don't have a cafeteria. Now, you might want to add something like we currently. So we currently do not have a cafeteria in our office building, and it is a huge problem for all of us. Great, now that's much better. And remember to place a comma here because here you're using and to connect two complete clauses together. And so having that Oxford comma there can uh, really make it easier for your readers to follow. During lunchtime, we need to go out and find a place to have lunch. Okay, so during lunchtime, that's, a, that's an adverb, right? And so initial adverbs are followed by a comma. So during lunchtime, we need to go out and find a place to have lunch. I think you will also agree that there are not many restaurants or cafes close to our building. So it also takes time to go out and come back. Okay, great. And so again, so is um, a coordinating conjunction. So you need a comma again here. Why? Because this is a full sentence and so is this one. So we need a comma before that linker. Okay, now this is great. I just feel that maybe the way we connected the sentences, the way the sentences are connected here, 
could be improved. Uh, let's see how we can do that. So as you know, we currently do not have a cafeteria in our office building and is it a huge and it is a huge problem for all of us. That's a nice topic sentence, by the way. During lunchtime, we need to go out. So you don't want to be too absolute. During lunchtime, we often need to go out and find a place to have lunch. And so here, at the expense of making our sentence very long, you could add a linker like, and I think you will also agree that there are not many restaurants or cafes close to our building. So if I were you, Yasmin, I would add an and here. And then uh, to prevent my sentence from becoming overly long, I would end it here. And instead of so, I would use something like therefore, it is also it also takes us or it also takes some time to go out and come back, right? Okay, come back. Um, you could you could use if you want to maintain a more formal tone. You might say return to go out and return in time to resume our responsibilities, right? Again, not a mistake, just trying to add to the word count and also make it sound a little bit more uh, formal. Okay, so the next aim is suggest where the cafeteria could be built. So let's see what we have here. I was wondering if you could build a cafeteria behind our office building. There is already empty land there. Okay, good. However, I feel that you're making a request while the question says just suggest where the cafeteria could be built. So you're not requesting it. You're just saying, here's an idea, right? So um, uh, you might want to start this paragraph with a uh, topic sentence that uh, clearly demonstrates that you are making a suggestion. So you could say something like this. Um, I have been considering a number of possible locations for a cafeteria and would like to suggest one of them here. You see, I haven't mentioned where I want them to build or where I would think where I think it would be a good idea to build it, but I'm just saying, you know, here's my suggestion, right? So I've been considering a number of possible locations for a cafeteria and would like to suggest one of them here or suggest was one here. Okay. And then instead of saying I was wondering if you could build, um you could say something like uh perhaps the cafeteria or um, per something like, I think or I believe it would be best to build the cafeteria, okay, um, behind our office building. And then you could link these two sentences together. You could say, since there is already an empty land. So land is um, uncountable. So if you want to make it countable, you would say, since there is already an empty piece of land there, just like that. So we add it to the length of this paragraph. We, um, we, we try to maintain balance between the, the two paragraphs. And also we added a topic sentence um, at the very beginning as well. Okay. Now, moving on to the third aim, which is say how it would benefit the employees. Let's see. I believe if we have a cafeteria in the building, this will make our lives easier, improve the work performance, and save time. Okay, that's uh, good, but again, uh, you might want to start with a topic sentence. So, um, I believe um, building or, or having a cafeteria in our office building would benefit the team in many ways. Okay, so you just want to say it's going to benefit the team in many ways. Um, and you could you could say something like, well, you got the three ideas. So make our lives easier, improve, right? Um, so you could you could say something like this. I believe having a cafeteria in our office building would benefit the team in many ways. Specifically, 
it would and then you you go through the benefits it would make our lives easier so that's number one uh, improve uh, the work performance whose work performance are we talking about so we could say employees uh, work performance and save everyone a great deal of time there then we have the closing which is I look forward to hearing from you soon which is a good closing I mean I don't see anything wrong with it but what is the main ask yourself what is the main purpose of this letter I believe the main purpose has been to to make a suggestion right so this closing should reflect what the main aim should be um, if I were you Yasmin I would probably say something like I hope you find these suggestions useful or I hope you will take that, that this is also a nice one I hope you will take my um, recommendations into consideration right or my advice into consideration and then remember never um, finish your closing with a with a comma it always has to end in a period right and then we have best regards Yasmin okay that was a very very good piece of writing it was an advanced level writing and but there's always you know there's always room for improvement and that's why we have this uh, this weekly show uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video now for next uh, week I have a little surprise we're switching to task to everyone and so we are going to have um, essays and we will review one of the essays that will be sent in to us. Um, the question for next week is, in many parts of the world, farming has always been one of the most important jobs. Nowadays, however, young people hesitate to enter this profession. Why is this the case? And what can be done about this problem? As always, remember, you can send in your writing uh, for review. All you have to do is email it to info at fasttrackesl.com and leave a comment in uh, the, the comment section below. I look forward to reading your, uh, your essays for next week. Thank you for watching as always and supporting this channel. Good luck, guys. Want your writing corrected? Welcome to Fast Track ESL's Writing Correction Series, where every week we will be reviewing sample writing written and submitted by you with detailed feedback and advice to help you improve your performance. At the end of each week's video, a new topic will be provided for the new episode that will be released the following week. All you have to do is email your writing to info at FastTrackESL.com and leave your name and country in the comment section of the video on YouTube. Yes, it's really that easy. Every week, one sample writing will be selected from among all the submissions and we will review and correct it for our next episode. Just make sure you've subscribed to our channel Leave your name and country in the comments and email us your writing. Who knows, your writing may be reviewed in our next video, so stay tuned.